DCS Flight Panels was developed by Yerker Dahlblom, with a little help from me, Paul Marsh, to allow SATEC Pro flight panels to be configured for use with DCS World aircraft modules. Originally part of MadCat's gaming controllers, SATEC is now owned by Logitech. For information on the panels themselves, download drivers, or get technical support, you will have to visit Logitech.com now instead of SATEC. In its simplest form, DCS Flight Panels acts as a keyboard emulator. As an emulator, it can actually be used with any game or program, not just with DCS World. When you open DCS Flight Panels, only those panels connected to your PC will show up in the tabs. We'll start with examples of how to assign keyboard commands to various switches, buttons, and knobs. First, start a new profile by clicking on the New File icon, or File, then New on the menu bar. If the choice appears, click Yes to discard unsaved changes as this is a new profile. In the dialog box that appears, click the Module Selection field and select Key Emulator, then click OK. We are now ready to configure our first switch. Many, if not most, flight simulators use the G key to toggle between gear up and gear down. So, with the PZ55 switch panel selected, click on the gear lever up field, and after it is highlighted in yellow, simply press the G key on your keyboard. Now, select the gear lever down field and press G again. The switch panel gear lever has now been configured to toggle the landing gear up and down. These settings are not case sensitive, and the VK that appears means virtual key. If you want to clear a configuration, simply double click in the field in question. You can test that the command will be sent by moving the gear lever up and down and observing the key command in the log box. If your simulator allows you to set unique key commands for gear up and gear down, let's say that left shift plus G is used for gear up and left control plus G for gear down. First, we'll double click gear up to clear it and enter left shift plus G. Next, clear gear down and enter left control plus G. Once again, we can test this by moving the gear lever and observing the log box. These configuration steps apply to all switches, buttons, levers, and knobs on any of the Logitech Pro flight panels. In the case of the PZ70 multi-panel, though, you have the ability to use separate configurations for each position of the dial on the left. Here, the knob is in the ALT position for altitude, and will enter some key commands for flaps up and flaps down. Let's use left shift plus F for up and right shift plus F for down. If we move the knob to the VS position for vertical speed, the flap configuration clears and we can configure a different control. For example, let's say E clears alarms and we'll map that to the flap lever down position. By switching the knob back and forth, you can observe the different profiles for each knob position. The only downside is that if you happen to want a certain control to work the same regardless of the knob position, you will have to duplicate the control mapping for each of these positions. As an example, we'll put the letter A in the autopilot on box. Once each knob position has been configured, pressing the letter A will send its control command regardless of the knob setting. Even as a keyboard emulator, DCS Flight Panels has a number of useful features that extend its capability beyond sending individual key commands from a given control. One is the ability to set a delay from when the control is activated to when the command is actually sent. Right-click in a field that has already been configured and select the delay you want from the drop-down menu that appears. 50 milliseconds is the default setting. The usefulness of this feature will become more apparent when we look at configuring key command sequences next. Complex modules such as the A10C will have many more in-cockpit buttons and switches than are available on the Logitech panels. One method to deal with this is to configure multiple in-cockpit controls to a single panel control. 
As an example, we'll configure all four A10 fuel boost pumps to the fuel pump switch on the switch panel. For simplicity, pumps on will be left shift plus one through four and off will be right shift plus one through four. Right click on the fuel pump on field and then click edit sequence. In the new dialog box that appears, click add after which another dialog box will appear. This configuration tool also allows for setting a delay or break from when the switch is thrown to when the command is sent and for setting the duration of the key press. Add a delay if you don't want all in cockpit switches in the sequence to be thrown at once. Click left shift plus one, enter a one half second delay and then click OK. Now click add to enter the second key command in the sequence. In this example, it will be left shift plus two with another half second delay. Complete the sequence by adding left shift plus three and left shift plus four commands. Now, before leaving this configuration box, enter a short description in the information field. In this example, I'll type boost pumps on. Click OK to complete the sequence configuration. Notice that fuel pump on has been labeled boost pumps on. You would follow the same process to add the commands for boost pumps off. When we test this, you can see that all commands in the sequence are sent. The delay is represented by the symbols on the left. You can edit the sequence if necessary by right clicking on the field and selecting edit sequence. If you want to change the sequence of events, select the command you want to move and click up or down. If you want to edit a given command, select that command and click edit. If you happen to have a backlit information panel or BIP, you have the ability to configure its LED lights to be activated according to switch, button and lever positions of the other panels. Let's say that the LED in the upper left position 1 1 is labeled battery. Green will indicate battery on and dark will indicate battery off. After adding B for battery on and right control plus B for off, right click on the field and select edit BIP at the bottom of the list. Click add to configure the LED. In this case position 1 1 and green have already been selected, but the OK button is grayed out. It's a little quirk of the program, but you have to make a change to activate the OK button. I'll simply select position 1, 2 and then go back to 1, 1. I don't want to delay and I only have one BIP, so I don't need to select which one to activate. And now I can click OK. Then click OK again. The command field has been shaded to a light orange to indicate that the BIP LED has been configured for this control. Next, I'll right click the off field and configure the LED for this switch position. Click Edit BIP, click Add, and now change the color from green to dark. Click OK and then OK again. If you want, you can activate an LED without even sending a key command. Choose the switch that you want to configure and go through the same process. Even the radio panel can be put to use in keyboard emulator mode. In the A10C, left alt plus the keypad plus sign activates the AM radio. I'll configure the upper active standby button to toggle the AM radio menu on and off by putting the key command first in the button on mode and then again in the button off mode. The keypad plus sign shows up as add. The LED displays on the radio panel are not dynamic when in keyboard emulator mode, meaning they won't show in cockpit frequencies or changes to those frequencies, but they can be put to use nonetheless. One example would be as a reminder of in-game frequencies that will be used. You can configure the displays for each position of the mode dials on the left. While in COM1 on the upper displays, I'll put in an AM frequency of 124 on the active side of the display and 40 FM on the standby side. These numbers will be static unless changed in DCS flight panels, but they can be changed while in game by tabbing out to DCS flight panels. You will have to cycle the radio selection knob on the panel to activate the new settings once back in game. 
DCS Flight Panels offers a second keyboard emulator mode, which allows the radio panel to interact with Simple Radio Standalone, or SRS. Click on the New File icon and select Key Emulator SRS to use this mode. When you go to the PZ69 radio panel, you will see that the configuration options are now missing. That's the downside to this mode, but the upside is that you can use the radio panel dials to change radio frequencies through SRS. This is quite useful with DCS World modules that don't support 3D cockpits and, as a result, can't have DCS BIOS profiles. If you are using a DCS Flight Panels profile supported by a DCS BIOS profile, SRS will respond to radio frequency changes, so in those cases a special SRS mode is not required. There is a little quirk in DCS Flight Panels that you should be aware of, and that can be worked around by editing a saved profile. The issue has to do with how DCS Flight Panels reacts to the use of left and right ALT keys. Let's start with a fresh profile by clicking the New File icon. Next, I'll configure the battery switch and save the profile. Notice that before a profile has been saved for the first time, the Open Text Editor icon is grayed out. After saving the profile, the icon is active. At this point, I want to configure the Avionics Master Switch On position to Left Alt plus R. However, when I attempt to do so, only the word L menu appears. I don't know why this is, but it is not easily fixed in the software itself. To correct this, save the profile again and click the Open Text Editor icon. First, find the panel you are working on, in this case there is only one, and then find the command line with L menu. We don't want to change the L menu command itself, but we do want to add the missing keystroke in this case the letter R. As this is a text editor, we need to type the whole command of VK underscore R, including the preceding plus sign. Save the profile and go back to DCS Flight Panels. Now reopen the saved profile and notice that the entire key command is present. The chances are pretty good that you'll run into another issue of panel ID numbers changing. This can happen if you change the USB port that any particular panel is connected to, or when you move your gear to a new PC as I have done recently. Any existing DCS Flight Panels profiles will have to be updated in order to work with the affected panels. When you open one of these profiles, an error message will appear informing you of the problem. Click OK for each panel that throws the error. You will have to manually enter the correct ID into the profile for each panel separately. First, select the panel that you want to update. Next, look for the ID button and click it. As the notice says, the ID number for this panel has now been saved to the clipboard. Click OK and then click the icon that opens the profile in a text editor. Now, find the panel being updated, which in this case is the switch panel. We are going to edit the line named Panel Instance ID. Delete everything on that line after the equal sign and then paste the value stored in the clipboard. This panel has now been updated. Repeat these steps for each panel that requires an updated ID number and then save the file. This completes the tutorial on the basics and keyboard emulation mode of DCS flight panels. In the next tutorial, I'll cover the use of DCS BIOS profiles within DCS flight panels. Thank you for watching.